Princess Latifah of Dubai, whose disappearance has provoked international uproar and a UN inquiry, is being prompted to take her own life, her close friend has claimed. The princess, who was returned to the UAE in 2018 following a failed escape plan, has found bags of razor blades under her bed as guards relentlessly torture her in a bid to get her to obtaining a smuggled phone after she was imprisoned on her return to Dubai. Latifah contacted her close friend of over eight years, David Haig, about her horrific ordeal in a series of WhatsApp messages. The lawyer, human rights advocate and co-founder of the hashtag Free Latifah campaign exclusively tells The Sun online of the constant psychological torture Latifah. She told me that guards left a whole bag of razor blades under her bed, hinting at the easy option, David Reed. Latifah was causing a problem for them and they were desperate to break her. I was worried they had planted the razor blades so that they could make it look like suicide should anything happen to her at the hands of the guard. David, who was imprisoned in Dubai in 2014 and claims he was tortured for almost two years, details how there was something new every day in Latifah's mental torture. The blades were just one small part, he continues. Twice they left stopwatches around the apartment, counting how much time was passing with her life. It was a regular occurrence that they would offer to get her things and then throw them away when they felt like it, or just never bring it at all. The guards were desperate to mess with her brain, trying to get her to break. For three years, it's been real up. They would offer to buy her coffee, then pour it away in front of her. David reveals for the first time how guards frequently asked her to go outside with them in a desperate attempt to photograph Latifah doing normal things as proper. David believes they wanted to stage a similar photo to the one taken in December 2018, where Latifah was taken for lunch with him and High Commissioner for Human Rights Mary Robinson. The former Irish president recently opened up about how she was horribly tricked into believing Latifah was suffering from bipolar disorder and was traumatized by her escape or did Latifah would say she wanted to be covered with a hijab, and suddenly they would change their minds and wouldn't let her out. David continues, they would say to her, we are going to Starbucks, do you want anything? But would return only to pour the coffee away in front of her face. She was constantly denied requests for things she needed. Even when we thought she had contracted COVID they wouldn't send false promises to release her were constant, they would tease that if she just complied with what they wanted her to do, she would have to sit through hours of brainwashing lectures in order to further break her spirits, David says Latifah was forced into a brainwashing routine, that included only allowing her to watch one local news channel on a TV that guards can she would be sat down for two hours at a time for talks, David explains. Lecturing would be too weak of a word to describe it, it was more like brainwashing. During the intense sessions, David reports she would be fed vicious lies about her close friends and family, including her stepmother Princess Haya, who fled from Dubai to London in 2019 with her two children. He claims that when Latifah refused to say what guards wanted to hear, she was hit a few times and threatened she would never see the light of day again. The police are desperate to please Daddy David suggests her father, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al is orchestrating the daily torture routine behind Palace Wall. The Sheikh owns sprawling royal residences including a £75 million Surrey estate, and the world's largest horse breeding operation with farms. He is thought to be worth an estimated £2.9 billion. On one occasion, Latifah was taken from the villa to see her father in person, David Arif. He told her, I asked the guards to bring you to me whether you wanted to come or not. He doesn't care about her at all. Whenever she wouldn't comply, he just sent men to threaten her and these police, they all wanted to No policeman would attack a princess unless they were told to, so someone was giving those orders. In the hostage, in not safe at all Latifah was feared dead until she was seen for the first time in videos released to the BBC's Panorama by David and director of the hashtag Free Latifah campaign Tina Julia. In spring 2019, Latifah made contact with David and Tina through a trusted intermediary, and they exchanged letters for many weeks before smuggling a phone for the princess to record her heroin test. In the secretly filmed clips, Latifah explained she had been locked away in prison before being moved into a jail villa where she has been kept in solitary confinement for three years. The building is said to be covered security cameras and constant police surveillance, overlooking the Burj Al Arab, a reminder of Dubai's glamorous front, and Jumeria Beach, a tour citing years of abuse at the hands of her father. The princess has told in her own words how she traveled by car, jet ski and yacht towards India where she planned to claim political asylum. She recounted a horror story of her forced return to Dubai after being kidnapped at gunpoint by Emirati police. I'm a hostage in this villa has been converted into a jail. All the windows I can't open any window, Latifah tells the camera. More than a year now I've been by myself in solitary. They want me to break. I'm being punished. I'm not safe at all. I don't know if I'm going to survive. The police have said they will take me outside and shoot me if I don't. I'm scared she is being medicated to keep her quiet six months ago. Contact was lost with the princess when Latifah stopped reading and responding to messages left by the hashtag Free Latifah. Tina exclusively tells the Sun online, We are somewhat certain she must have been caught with the phone, and I am scared about what they will have done to her as punishment. Her greatest worry is that if Latifah is alive, she is being medicated to keep her silent, something Latifah
Latifa previously accused her father of doing to her older sister she while living at the family estate in Surrey, Princess Shamsa made an escape for a number of weeks in 2000 before being dragged kicking and screaming back to Dubai, where she has never been publicly written by hand in 2019, recently published letters revealed how Latifa urged the British forces to look further into her sister well make it bloody awkward for Sheikh Mohammed until he releases her now desperate for proof of life, David has been disappointed by the UAE's recent statement that detailed the princess as being cared for while the UN investigate the claims, the hashtag free Latifa campaign maintain they will continue to release more video clips to put pressure on Dubai until they are set Latifa You are not alone every 90 minutes in the UK a life is lost to suicide. It doesn't discriminate, touching the lives of people in every corner of society, from the homeless and unemployed to builders and doctors, reality stars and book. It's the biggest killer of people under the age of 35, more deadly than cancer and car crash and men are three times more likely to take their own life than women. Yet it's rarely spoken of, a taboo that threatens to continue its deadly rampage unless we all stop and take notice. That is why The Sun launched the You're Not Alone campaign. The aim is that by sharing practical advice, raising awareness and breaking down the barriers people face when talking about their mental health, we can all do our bit to help say let's all vow to ask for help when we need it, and listen out for others. You're not alone. If you, or anyone you know, needs help dealing with mental health problems, the following organizations provide support. We just want Latifa's situation to be known, and we will continue to go after Sheikh Mohammed's reputation until she is freed. Essentially, we will keep making it so bloody awkward for Sheikh Mohammed to go anywhere that he has no choice to give Latifa. All we want is for her to be released, so we will keep the pressure.